So with that, I would like to hand the session over to Thomas to talk to us about his work. Thomas. Thank you very much uh, for, for the kind introduction. Uh, I will show you what we've been doing over the, the past uh, 12 years. I started 12 years ago in the Robert University Medical Center in Nijmegen, the Netherlands. And our goal was, uh, uh, sorry, I need to share my, yes. Here it is. Uh, our goal was to facilitate and implement 3D technology in uh, uh, 3D imaging and 3D printing in daily clinical practice. Because we are an academic hospital, we do a lot of, of research, of course, but we are really attached to uh, clinical departments, uh, which allows us to really fast adapt uh, technology in clinical practice and to see if it works. So we're not doing four years of research, then go to a clinical setting and uh, see that we are not helping the patient with the technology we developed. I think it's very important and with 3D technology we are able to improve patient care by providing patient specific solutions. Um, 3D printing starts uh, in our hospital always with capturing the patient in 3D uh, using 3D images and you see some examples here on the left side you see 3D stereo photogrammetry or 3D photographs uh, in 1.5 milliseconds, we are able to capture an image like this, and we do it for all our patients. In the center, you see CBCT scanning, which is a, a CT scan with a very low radiation dose. So we get rid of a lot of our patients. And on the right side, you see intraoral scans we make of our patients. And the first scan I took of myself took uh, 45 minutes, and today we are able to do it within 45 seconds and get a very accurate 3D image of the dentition of our patients. We use a lot of 3D printers here in our lab, and we work with a lot of companies in the Netherlands, but also internationally. And with, of course, we have an, an Ultimaker here, and here you see uh, how we can use it. It's the printing of a, of a brain tumor, and we use this brain tumor to explain to our patients, these prints of our brain tumor to explain to our patients what will happen during surgery. So if we remove the tumor, which is the red part you see here, uh, some functions of the, of the patient will be affected. And we give this print to the patient so he can share with his family and friends what will happen during surgery. Uh, we also use new technology. And here you see a very fast printer, a digital light uh, printer. Um, and with this, we can very fast uh, print uh, prototypes or even implants that we use in patients. Here you see an Eiffel Tower of 10 centimeters being printed. And in six minutes, 20, it's, it's finished. So this means that if one of you will break their teeth, you go to a dentist, we can make an intraoral scan, and from our database of thousands of teeth, we can find the teeth which will fit the best in your, uh, in your mouth. And then we can print it immediately while you're still at the dentist. So this technology and the fast uh, evolution will enable this. We use 3D technology in all the phases that a patient goes through in our hospital, from diagnosis to the pre-treatment planning, the treatment itself, and a very important step is the evaluation phase. So we always check if the technology helped us during the process and helped the patient improving their quality of life. I will show you some examples because I think that's very important that we really use it in daily clinical practice. And the first example I will show you is from oral and maxillofacial surgery, which is the implantology. Uh, we use this in patients who lost all their teeth. Uh, can be due to a trauma or just uh, due to beco becoming older uh, during life. Um, and this is how we used to treat patients. So we make a full incision. Here you see an upper jaw of the patient, make a full incision, place these implants uh, in the mouth of the patient based on the experience and the view that the surgeon has during surgery. And since 10 years, we fully uh, plan this in our computer. So we make a scan of the patient and we can. Uh, precisely plan where we need to place these implants in the bone. If they are not surrounded by bone, they will get lost and the patient had to be uh, operated again. So by using technology like this, we can do it right the first time, which is, I think, very important nowadays. Then we print a surgical guide and using the surgical guide, we uh, transfer the computer planning to the surgery itself. And the surgeon is only able to drill in a certain direction in these holes 
uh, up till a certain depth. And then finally, we uh, build the hole, we can place the implant. And it's completely dictated by the computer planning we did prior to the surgery. And the prints of such a uh, uh, surgical guide are very cheap. And here you see the, the final results. We only made very small incisions. The patient can go home the same day. You don't have to stay over for one night, which they had to do uh, with the previous surgery sometimes. Um, and of course, we do a lot of research. We always check how, we, uh, how accurate we can do this with the surgical guides and how we can improve it for new patients. And one thing that's very important and that we learned over the past few years is the cooperation between surgeons. You see here uh, one of our head surgeons. Uh, and here you see one of our engineers of the 3D lab. So he's really there to see if it turns out the way he planned. And because they always speak to each other, they, they now even share the room, their office. I think this is a very important step. And by, by working like this, we were able to uh, print a, a fully 3D printed prosthesis, which you see here. It's the first 3D printed prosthesis in the Netherlands. Uh, and we place it in the mouth of the patient at the end of surgery. And the cost of such a prosthesis are approximately 100 euros. And conventional prosthesis will cost two to 3,000 euros. So we can really save a lot of costs, healthcare costs here. And here you see it. At the end of surgery, we place the teeth in the mouth of the patient. And before we use 3D printed prosthesis, the, the patient stayed without teeth for approximately two to three months. And this guy here you see on the right, he's a bus driver, and he started working two days after surgery because he was feeling really confident with his new teeth in his mouth. So it's really changing the lives of our patients. And also decreasing costs, which is very important. But for us, it's very important that the quality of life improves for our also, in more complex cases, we, we use 3D technology. Here you see a complex oncological reconstruction of uh, the mandible of our patients. So we remove a large piece of uh, the lower jaw, which is called the mandible. And we reconstruct it with a piece of bone from the lower leg, the fibula bone, with a vascularization. Before we used 3D technology, it was a very complex puzzle to do a reconstruction like this. Surgery takes approximately 12 hours in these cases. And we try to reduce surgery time by making a more predictable computer planning. And all these kinds of surgery we plan nowadays uh, using scans we made of the patient. And the blue things you see are surgical guides, which we use during surgery to uh, transfer our planning to the surgery. So the surgeon knows exactly which piece of bone he needs to take out. And he knows exactly which piece of fibula bone he needs to take out to make a correct reconstruction. And finally, we have a third template. So he's already uh, able to create the new uh, lower jaw and then reconnect it. And by doing this, we can save a lot of surgery time. And this is surgery time in elder patients. And the longer the surgery will take, the more complications we will get after surgery. We are even able to do something like this, and this is a design of a reconstruction plate of one of our patients, and it's printed using a titanium printer. So that's the next step for us. It's really a patient-specific implant, which will remain in the, uh, in the patient. And here you see the surgical guide again, and the surgeon is able to drill all these holes, which are there for the reconstruction plate. And by making it such a, a predictable uh, printing process, or a, the planning process, it's almost like an IKEA building package for the surgeon. It's becoming very convenient and, uh, and fast. And here you see one of the surgical pictures. And this is the patient after surgery. So without using 3D technology, we were not able to create beautiful face like this. Without the eyes of the privacy, of the privacy of the patient. And uh, from uh, oral maxillofacial surgery, we transferred to a, a lab which is now centralized in our hospital and we work for over 15 departments in, in the Rockford University Medical Center. And I will show you one example of what we've been able to do to uh, change the life of patients who lost their legs. Here you see one of a patient who lost a leg and they get a prosthesis like this. Uh, which is a socket prosthesis, and they have a lot of problems with it. They are not able to walk correctly, and they have a, a lot of wounds often. And again, it's very important. This is one of our engineers, Luke Farmer, and this is one of the uh, doctors 
and this is the general surgeon and they are really sitting together as a team seeing where they can help these patients and what we did is develop a really a, a patient specific implant which will be fixed in the bone of the patient and a click prosthesis can be fixed on to these uh, these implants we design it this is a rough design then we make a, a very nice design in the computer really patient specific and then we print it again using a titanium printer with a different structure. Here you see the printing process. We did it, this one with a company uh, called Xilloc in Maastricht. So we can do it with a lot of companies. Printed from a titanium, uh, titanium printer. Here you see five implants being printed for different patients. Here you see it during surgery. So the implants are, are placed during surgery. It's actually quite... Uh, fast and easy uh, surgery. Here the implant is installed. And it really fits nice and uh, uh, it's really an improvement. I think that's most important here you see the patient and he was almost in a wheelchair and now he's able to function normal again. And it was only possible because we used 3D technology and a great team to help this patient improve his quality of life. One thing we try to do is really share our knowledge. So we work together with a lot of academic hospitals in the Netherlands uh, and also with, with smaller hospitals in the Netherlands uh, to share our knowledge and to help more patients. I think this is very important. Um, and I want to finalize my talk with showing you a, a brief outlook of the future, future things that we are working on. And one of the future things that we are working on, which probably uh, will be, be a new technology, which we can use instead of 3D printing, for example, for surgical guides, is augmented reality. And we'll show you two simple examples of how it works. So again, based on 3D images, uh, we can create images like this, which the surgeon can use during surgery. This is a project we did with the Princess Maxima Center for Child Oncology. This is a child with a uh, kidney tumor. She's five years of age, and the surgeon wants to project this uh, on top of the surgery instead of a 3D print that he used to uh, work with before we had this technology available. So in yellow, you see the tumor, and he's able to uh, ask the, the, the HoloLens glasses to show him certain anatomy or certain uh, the tumor, for example, or the vascular supply to the tumor. And we treated 20 patients now, and it really uh, is very promising for me. The things we really want to do is uh, use this technology to guide the surgeon. And this is a simulation setup of a hip that was fractured. And this is a, a new project that we've been working on for the, for the past year. It's also a very promising project. So what the glasses will show you, it's the real world with a, a virtual world on top of it. And if you move the, the patient or the simulated hip in this, uh, this case, uh, you see where you need to place the reconstruction. And the closer you get to the final end position with your reconstruction, uh, reconstruction piece of bone, the greener it will get. And we can even give the surgeon audio feedback uh, to show him or to, to guide him to the correct position. And I think this will uh, change again the future of, of the surgeons and will hope to increase quality of life of the patient by uh, performing better surgeries. So the thing I always want to say or at, my, at the end of my talk, it's, it's not really my work, but it's the work of the complete team, uh, especially the talented uh, young people in, in our 3D lab. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much, Thomas. That was a fantastic talk. The, the work you're doing is, wow, incredible. Um, it, it's really mind-blowing. And the impact that you have on patients' quality of life and care is pretty astounding. Um, the, the fact they can go home <laughs> on the same day and you can help them understand you know, what is happening before their surgery um, and also be able to um, custom print, um, you know, you know, prosthetics and, and body parts is just pretty, pretty amazing. Um, so we definitely will circle back with you in a moment with some questions. Um, there's been yeah. quite a bit of comments, <laughs> you can see. Um, 
So with that, um, if I can have you unshare your screen, I 